well, uh, I just love Daft Punk. <laughs> That's all. And um, yeah, I'm going to talk a, lot, a little bit about how customer research can be done, a little bit more qualitative, and how you can do it without a lot of time and money. And if you do it right, you can even save time and money. And uh, are there any soccer fans in here? A little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that with a practical example of how that helped us with the World Cup designs uh, we did for SBS On Demand. I was told that most people know what SBS On Demand is, is that right? Uh, for those who don't, we're just a free um, streaming service for all Aussies with lots of uh, movies, shows, sports and news. And we design for many apps, as you can see here. Uh, like we have desktop and mobile, um, mobile apps, iOS and uh, Android, and lots of connected TVs like Apple TV, and we're doing lots of work now at the moment at Android TV. And we all do that just with a team of three designers, which is, uh, so without Quinn and uh, uh, Luisa at the time, or Lenny now, I wouldn't be able to do any of that. And just for comparison, most other teams, I think they have like maybe 10 people, so it's a big job, but uh, yeah, we love our job. And uh, we love what the new stuff is that comes all the time. So uh, same here, my boss, uh, Chris, who's sitting there, uh, just came to me and said, Ulf, we have like a um, few million people that will use on demand to watch the World Cup. How can you make it the best experience? And I said like, ah, that's easy, leave it with me, no problem. And as always, I'm like, I had no idea how to do it, <laughs> no clue. And I was getting really excited because uh, soccer fans are um, really passionate. And I got really anxious as well because soccer fans are getting really passionate. And if I mess that up, I might be the, I don't know, get beaten up on the street or something as uh, the person who m messed up the World Cup in Australia. But yeah, so there were four more challenges, and um, SBS On Demand started really as a destination for movies and drama series, and that's how we got big. And that means sport features and navigation they weren't that great, and we're also public broadcasters, so we can't waste your money too much. And uh, yeah, we co I couldn't look at others, uh, how, how did others do World Cup, because it was just us. And uh, four years before that, streaming wasn't so important, so it was all more TV, so I couldn't even have a look who, what was done before that. And we had no data about the World Cup viewers or what's important to them, especially when they do uh, something online. So I was thinking, how could I make that the most uh, efficient, and how, how can I do some uh, preparation? And that's our approach. So we started with uh, competitor reviews, just to see what features exist. So basically what's out there. And then tested with, uh, so, so we identified the best apps that we thought uh, we find, and then we tested with their users, their apps and their features, which is probably uh, yeah, different to what most people do. And uh, see what resonates with the audience. Uh, and then we build a prototype just to understand for ourselves as well. Was it really helpful to um, see what we liked ourselves and what we could put in? And then we tested it with uh, people in person as well and asked a lot of questions. So we, uh, we teamed up with our long-term partner, Acido, who did, um, they're, they're like specialists on all things TV, and they did a really good job at um, all the stages, but especially with the in-house testing, which was nice. And yeah, these are where my research goals, like what, what's the typical viewing behavior, how do users navigate, and what features do they want? And we first looked at a lot of different apps in and outside of Australia, and I saw very complex video players. You can see there the split screen uh, or some key events that are highlighted in the timeline. And... Um, there are lots of statistics about players and teams. I think this is especially good for uh, people who like sports betting or fantasy leagues and stuff like that. 
they had advanced search. Uh, everybody, uh, anybody who worked with search knows it's quite complex, and here they could find teams or even games and mobile notifications as well, even setting reminders, as you can see here. And I looked at all of that stuff. I'm like, there's no way we can ever build that. No way. So the next research method was uh, the competitor testing. And I set that up with user testing. I actually really liked the, um, how that tool helped me to quickly set up different tests. So uh, 38 participants, but I use like nine different competitors, different test settings like mo mobile or desktop, and then I uh, did variations. So, so if I learn something, I change the questions. And here's an example. So here's the Dozen app, and I'm already logged in. So one of my favorite features that Dozen has is the live and next um, streaming. And then I also really, it, I usually enjoy, I'm, I'm a really big supporter of FC Chelsea. And so I usually enjoy when like a live game is playing, I can just log onto the app and automatically start. I also enjoy the schedule feature. So I know what I'm going to be watching this week. So she liked really clean uh, layouts. It was a good example. Um, not so clean, our prototype. Um, and then we did the in-house user testing. So we used a TV, or we had to use a test with TV as well. That's why we did it in-house. It's really hard to do remotely. And yeah, I really liked, I, I, we, we had like more or less an hour uh, interview with each uh, user afterwards, and it was really good to verify. So you could say it's triangulation, right? We did different tests and then verified that. So what did we find out? Um, the first thing I wanted to know is, do we need to design for both desktop and mobile? Because that costs us a lot of uh, time and money. And uh, really, most people use, especially for soccer, the big screen for longer matches because you yeah, can't see much otherwise with a small ball. But uh, So that's the preference. But they also use smaller devices, for example, to browse or if, if they're in the train, maybe to check what they want to watch later. So uh, we really had to provide for all platforms. We did a little card sort as well to find out more about the content preferences. And you can see here the live streams were the most important. So people want to see it live, but then if they miss it, they actually prefer the highlights and the mini games. So we made that a really big component of our content. And they like really clean and simple layouts, not to be overwhelmed with too much information. Um, some people said they, they really like the teams and matches, for example, that uh, users say, oh, I love the, love the teams. But when we looked into the video player uh, usage, it was rather basic. So that's what I tried to uh, show with that image, if you, if you want to take pictures. <laughs> and yeah, so they, they weren't really using all the advanced fe video uh, features, which would be really hard to build. But uh, many people said they liked the watch from start for the live games. And another really interesting question for us was, would we um, bring articles into uh, SPS On Demand? And most users didn't really want them, which was interesting to us, because they get their information on Google or other apps. And it's not only true for articles, but, but also for statistics. So that's why we didn't build that in. Uh. Cool. Uh, here's what we built, like a very clean destination page. We skip many of the player features and then focus on making it a really stable experience. That's a very easy schedule that we implemented and um, yeah, team and group pages so people could really find their favorite teams. Okay, cool. How did it go? Um, I had to gray out a few things. <laughs> Hopefully it's still useful, but you can see there's a spike in the beginning and there was uh, actually login issues. So in the first three, four days, we had massive login issues, but after that's pretty much smooth sailing. And yeah, I was myself invited at a barbecue somewhere the first few days and uh, yeah, 
lots of people standing around with cocktails and and on a big screen. And then uh, the smart TV froze. And I'm like, that's not good. And I got uh, socially bullied a little bit, you know? It's like, oh, oh, what did you do? Um, yeah, but then we fixed it with the Chromecast and the mobile app, put it on the big screen, and it was good. And I thought in that moment, that's it. I mean, that, that is really bad, and everybody has that. But statistically, actually, it's the opposite. So we, I think we delivered one of the most stable uh, big events, big digital events ever. And we have really good positive sentiment as well. So I asked Beth from our support team to give me some positive feedback from customers, and she did. Uh, she just sent me like a hundred, almost like a hundred messages from feedback, and I put a few of the quotes in here, so they're real customer uh, feedback. But um, I thought like maybe I make a cool statistics and wanted to know is the ratio better with the positive or the negatives, and she said, oh no, we, we got like 2,000 negatives. I was like, shit, I mean, I, I can't put it in the statistics, that doesn't look good. And she said, yeah, Uf, but you don't understand. I mean, this is like, this is amazing support. We hardly get anything uh, positive. We got like 100. So yeah, you probably have just have to trust her on that. But there were a few things that also didn't work. Do you remember that I said multiple times, like teams, people like teams, and, and all, that's what the research showed, but actually uh, that's what the analytics showed. Maybe that's why it's good to make, mix it up with Content Square or what, what, uh, whatever you like. And yeah, nobody used the teams, basically. Uh, and also people really wanted to start from the beginning feature, and we didn't, we decided not to put it in. I mean, it's hard to uh, always, keep everybody happy, and we didn't have that much uh, manpower, but yeah, that's something that people wanted as well, and we didn't have. So I'm just telling you that as well, just to be very honest about it, and I think it's not always um, perfect. So you do the research, and you might get a little, a few hints, but you're not like, well, I know it all. So you can't take it for face value, but I think as a um, direction, it really helped us a lot. Cool. So results, um, yeah, we had a record-breaking 4.5 million Aussies streaming, and the top match when Australia won against Tunisia was like an average combined linear and on-demand um, audience of 1.72 million, and 80 million consumption hours, which is quite insane. And also, uh, in the first two weeks of the tournament, we became the number one highest ranking app in the iOS app store. So yeah, it's not like Netflix or Disney or I don't know, Canva, that's us. So <laughs> um, all the hard work uh, uh, paid off, I guess. Uh, and yeah, here are my three takeaways. Uh, I have four takeaways. First three are, um, your audience is different, you know? So don't just do what others are doing. You can't just copy what your competitor is doing. Why? Because you don't know. Is that a feature that they might maybe don't like and they already have something new in the pipeline or they didn't have enough money to do something better? So your audience is different, right? So I feel it's really, it's really better to test yourself. The next takeaway is that you don't need a big team or a lot of time or money, but I mean, sure, you need somebody who knows how to do it, but even that can be learned. And number three is you can even save money. So I would say the biggest value of the testing was to find out what we didn't need to build. So, you know, normally in other, um, if, if you read something online, it's almost always, it would be like an investment into a better product. So you do some research and then have a better quality product. That's not what we did, okay? No, we use it as a tool to save money. As a, I see CX or UX as actually risk management, okay? So you don't need that. So you, you don't need any of the research. You just go off and, and do it. But I mean, there's a bit of risk, little risk, that you might, everything that you build is actually good for nothing and everybody hates it. You can go on. All right? 
Anyway, um, and my last takeaway is Australia didn't make it this time, but there's always a new World Cup coming on. <laughs> Actually, we have secured the World Cup 2026, and we just designed a road to World Cup hub that you can use. It's free. It's only 620 days left. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully I'll see many of you there. <laughs>